Welcome everyone to the Teach for America info session. My name is Nicole Wesley and I'm the Senior Program Manager of Career Supports at the Dream.us. We are very excited for our scholars to be attending this session. Feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, your name, what college you attend, your major, and we'd love to learn more about you. So with that, I am going to turn it over to uh, our contact at Teach for America, Jose Gonzalez, who is the Senior Managing Director of Immigration and Education Alliance. Thanks, Nicole, for, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Gonzalez Camarena. My pronouns are he, him, and él. And I have the immense privilege of leading the Immigration and Education Alliance at Teach for America, formerly known as the DACA Initiative. A couple of quick fun facts about me. I did my undergrad at the University of Pennsylvania, and I was one of the first DACA recipients to do the Teach for America core uh, program in the Los Angeles region. So I'm a 2014 TFA Los Angeles alum. And I have two colleagues here who I will pass the mic over to to introduce themselves as well. So Sophia, um, you're up. Definitely. Thank you so much, Jose, for the introduction. Um, my name is Sophia Higginbottom Lodge. I am super, super happy to be here with y'all today. Um, I work as a recruitment manager for Teach for America. So I work with all of our different folks coming from all kinds of different statuses all over the nation. Um, and I attended Denison University in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, my family, most of them are from there. Um, oh, my pronouns are she, her, ella, or wahine. Um, yeah, and then I'm calling in from Jacksonville, Florida this evening. And I'll pass it to you, Julie. Thank you, Sophia, and thank you, Jose, um, and letting me join you all today. Um, but my name is Julie Gunderson. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Engagement with Teach for America, um, and I'm actually based here in Denver now. I went to the University of Denver um, and was a core member in Memphis for a handful of years, but um, I work with students who are early on in their college experience to just plug them into other opportunities to engage, and I'll send it back to you, Jose. Yes, and so um, Sophia is our central point of contact on, on the recruitment team at Teach for America for anyone who is a DACA recipient or holds another one of the eligible employment authorization documents that we'll, we'll touch on a little bit later. And Julie is one of our um, experts in residence on Ignite. So feel free throughout our time together to ask questions in the chat. We'll also have time at, at the end as well. And so a little bit about what you can expect uh, for, for the next hour or so, we're gonna touch, touch a little bit on what Teach for America is, and then within that, what the Immigration and Education Alliance is and does at TFA. Um, we'll talk about two of our programs, the Ignite Fellowship and the Core Member Program. And we'll um, have the, the most excited, the, the thing that I'm most excited for, for you all is to hear from um, some of our, our folks who have both a Teach for America and Dream.us connection. So we have a panel of folks for you all to hear from about their experiences toward the end as well. And to, to kick us off, Sophia, I'm gonna kick it over to you. Um, to tell folks a little bit about who we are as Teach for America. Definitely. So Teach for America is a nonprofit organization working to confront educational inequity through teaching and in every sector of society to create a country free from this injustice. Our vision is that one day all children in this nation will have the opportunity to attain an excellent education. Children growing up in disenfranchised communities, as many of you may know, lack access to resources and opportunities and attend schools that are not equipped to meet all of their needs. 1.3 million students drop out of high school in the United States each year. More than half are students of color and most are low income. Students from low income families drop out of high school 
at twice the rate of upper middle and high income families, according to a 2019 study by the National Center for Education Statistics. Some might think that equality, giving everyone access to the same resources is the answer to this, but as the picture demonstrates, that is not going to give everyone what they might individually need to succeed. The difference between equality and equity is that equity recognizes that each person has a unique set of circumstances and therefore may need different resources or support to achieve equal outcomes. TFA believes in equity, in providing every student with the specific resources and opportunities to access peace and success in all areas of their lives. As a core member, you'll receive tools needed to apply equity-minded thinking in all of your work in the classroom and beyond. Teach for America recruits outstanding and diverse leaders to become TFA core members. Core members commit to teaching for two years in a low-income community where they're employed by local schools and confront both the challenges and the joys of expanding opportunities for kids. And after two years, core members go on to become part of the larger TFA alumni network. Informed and inspired by their students, many continue teaching. Others pursue other leadership roles in schools or school um, systems or launch careers in other fields that end up shaping educational access and opportunity. All right, thank you. So I like to say that Teach for America is a lifelong commitment that simply starts with two years in the classroom. TFA aims to recruit leaders who wanna make a career out of social justice work, whether that means staying in the classroom after the core, becoming a lawyer, a doctor, the next great poet. Our mission goes way beyond your two years in the classroom as a teacher. That's simply just the start for you and for us. Our core members' commitment to their students stays with them. And no matter what career path you choose, they continue to work and advocate for a world of expanded opportunity for all children. Teachers did not cause the systemic injustices we see in classrooms across the nation, and teachers alone cannot solve those inequities. We need leaders in all sectors fighting for our students. We need a large and passionate force of politically active education leaders to shape public will, to hold elected office, and to lead large scale systemic change. Next slide, please, Jose. So this is where you could fit in. We are on a mission to transform education and systems that make it difficult for children to learn, lead, and thrive. Upon joining TFA, Starting on day one, you have the opportunity to make an immediate impact in positively affecting the lives of students and their families. You show up and you do right by your students every day for two years, knowing that each of them comes to you with a different set of circumstances and challenges. During your time in the classroom, you learn from other educators, your TFA network, your own students, and as a result, you both um, will grow. You'll both grow personally and professionally. And your students grow too, discovering from you how to become a learner, a leader, and an advocate for their own goals. And at the end of your two years, you both walk away changed for the better. And if you're motivated by this, if you want to positively shape student lives, if you know knowledge is power and want to provide that, then this could be the opportunity for you. So what is it that happens after the classroom? Well, you become a member of a movement consisting of other TFA alumni, partners, stakeholders, and supporters across every professional sector in this country. You join a community of educators, innovators, culture makers involved in politics at local, state, and federal levels, maybe doctors, lawyers, and organizers who are committed to advocating for more equitable policies. You join a network that collectively touches every aspect of the educational experience in this country. Thank you so much, Sophia. And I, I, I wanna linger here on, on this slide 
a little bit because I'm, I'm about to pivot to share a little bit about the, the history of the Immigration and Education Alliance and the, the DACA recipients that we've accepted into our program and most recently our expansion beyond DACA as well. But in our, in our 350 plus um, Immigration and Education Alliance community, we have folks in every single one of, of these um, categories that, that you see on, on your screen, right? So folks are having an incredible impact in the classroom, at the school level, at the system level, and, and beyond. And I think that for, for many of, of the folks that we're able to bring into this work, right, their immigrant background and their immigrant identity, um, or, or maybe I, I shall, I'll speak for myself. I, I did feel in my four years of teaching in, in Los Angeles that that was my superpower, right? And predominantly, um, and especially teaching in a predominantly immigrant community in, in Northeast LA. Um, but with that, a little bit about the Immigration and Education Alliance. So after the Obama administration announced DACA in, in 2012, Teach for America started recruiting DACA recipients almost immediately, right? So we started with just two, um, two folks in our pilot region of, of Colorado in 2013, and we've been growing our, our network over time. We're now 350 plus strong. We have folks whose countries of origin are from all over the world. Um, and they are having an impact in, in classrooms across the country, right? And you'll get to hear from, from two of our teachers uh, later today about the impact that they're having in, in Phoenix and in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, but we also recognized, right, that there, um, there are folks with, with TPS, there are folks with asylee status. We have refugees in this country many other, other folks who have employment authorization through other statuses. So we've expanded Teach for America admissions beyond DACA as of the last recruitment season. And I think the, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, Nicole, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but, but the categories that are, are most um, relevant and, and salient for the dream.us would be DACA. And, and TPS, right? Both of which are eligible for our core member program. So that's our, our two-year um, teaching program. But you can see the rest of the eligible EAD categories on here. And I do want to note that due to certification, university partner, school partner, policy and funding considerations, we're only able to accept and place core members who are US citizens, lawful permanent residents or who have one of the EADs listed on, on your screen. Um, unfortunately, other EAD categories are not eligible for admission for the Teach for America core member program. We'll be talking a little bit about the Ignite Fellowship and an exciting pilot that, that we're running in partnership with the dream.us um, in, in a few slides as well. So this is for our two-year core member program. And these EAD folks, these eligible EAD folks that were able to admit into the core, whether they're DACA recipients, TPS holders, or, or something else, um, we are committed to ensuring that they have the support that they need to have the impact that they need and want to have in, in their classrooms, right? So you can see on, on your screen here just a a broad overview of some of the supports and resources that we make available to our, our folks who are part of the Immigration and Education Alliance Network, um, whether that's legal support, renewing employment authorization documents, adjustment of status support. If somebody has a pathway to adjust their status, we have an incredible law firm that we partner with based out of Chicago that has supported hundreds of our core members and alumni with a, a variety of immigration legal uh, processes. And we match that legal support with financial support, right? So for our core members currently in the core, their legal fees with Davidson and Ciceri, which is the law firm that we partner with, and their USCIS filing fee are fully covered 
by, by Teach for America. If they're DACA recipients, if they have a different EAD renewal, we cover those uh, expenses as well. Core members are eligible for up to $2,000 in financial support for an adjustment of status application. If they have a pathway to adjust their status, we also provide transitional funding and an education award to ensure that our, our core members are able to have access to this opportunity in as financially viable an option as, as possible. Um, we have some programmatic supports. There's pre-service training. We have a an immigration and education convenience. That's a big conference that we have usually every summer, though we did um, pause this, this past summer. And there's there's regional support. So there we have regions across the country with, with teams supporting folks on the ground in their respective regions. Um, we're also advocating for, for our folks, right? So we have an advisory board made up of alumni. Uh, we engage in some external affairs and government affairs work as well. Teach for America filed an amicus brief on the Regents DACA case back in 2019. Um, we bring some of our core members and alumni to Washington, D.C. to advocate for a pathway to citizenship for our teachers, for our students. We actually have one coming up next next month during, um, well, we're already in the lame duck, but later in, in the lame duck session, because we know and we understand that only a pathway to citizenship can guarantee certainty and um, uh, the breath of relief that, that our communities deserve. And so with that, we're gonna hone in a little bit on our, our two experiences. So we're going to start with Ignite, the Ignite Fellowship. So I'm going to invite Julie back on, and then we'll touch more on the uh, our core member program. Awesome. Thank you, Jose. So if anything that Sophia or Jose have mentioned, you're like, yes, I'm so on board for, I want to get started now. Well, you can. We do have an opportunity that is um, available for current college students, and that is the Ignite Fellowship. So as long as you're enrolled as an undergrad or a graduate student, you're able to participate and it would be an opportunity to tutor K through eight students in either literacy or math. Um, with a very low commitment, only about five hours per week, and you could start as early as next spring. So diving into the details a little bit more, the Ignite Fellowship, I always like to say, is a virtual part-time paid tutoring fellowship. It's quite a mouthful, but it is an opportunity for you to commit to a 12-week, 12, 12 to 13-week session with us, either in the fall or in the spring. You'd have about two-ish weeks of training and about 10 weeks of working directly with students. During those 10 weeks with students, you'd be online five hours per week, all virtual. So you would be um, supporting in either elementary literacy or middle school math. And the great part of that is like, you don't have to have previous tutoring experience, just passionate about equity and get to make a direct impact with students. So we are looking for people for the spring. And what that would look like in the day to day is um, you would work with about one to three students, same students each week, and um, you would be getting um, coaching from a veteran teacher there on campus with the students who are able to help you in lesson planning, analyzing data, as well as troubleshooting any technology issues that pop up. All students will be in person in school and you will join them virtually for those five hours. Um, and on top of that, there is some great benefits that you can part, um, reap as well. So not as a part of that whole journey, you'll get a lot of professional development and training, not only in like best practices um, within tutoring, but also just getting to um, get engaged with our network further, gain a lot of other transferable skills. Um, and we especially look for leadership um, or being able to reach goals, because that's a lot of what you'll do with your students and also get to make an immediate impact um, with students right there. We are in over 17 regions right now and might be in a region that you're located in. Um, and on top of that, you will get paid. Um, and there are, so if you have any other questions, you can drop them into the chat. Um, but otherwise, I'll send it back to you, Jose. 
Thanks, Julie. Yes, I I, I would double click on um, everything that you said and emphasize that this program, this Ignite Fellowship program was born out of the immediate need that we were hearing from teachers, uh, specifically in Phoenix. It started in, in Phoenix and has expanded um, and we hope will continue to grow for, for the years to, to come. And it's a great way for, for folks to engage with Teach for America's work, have a direct impact on students while you're still a student yourself um, in an undergrad or in graduate school. And um, to touch just a little bit on the application requirements, I do want to hone in on what you see highlighted here. So in order to be an Ignite Fellow, so again, this is for current undergraduate and graduate students, um, you must be eligible to work in the US so U.S. citizens, lawful permanent residents, DACA recipients, other eligible EAD holders. But very excitingly, very exciting update for this upcoming spring. We're opening up the, the application to Dream.us scholars, regardless of their specific immigration status, regardless of EAD status, um, so long as they have an individual taxpayer identification number issued by the IRS. And this is something that any, um, any undocumented student, any undocumented individual should be able to obtain. Um, otherwise, the, the requirements very much mirror what, what the general requirements are for, for the fellowship. I do want to note that our fellows are required to undergo background checks, right? And for an undocumented student in particular, that that may be a that they make they that may cause some pause. It may bring up some anxiety, right? And I want to name here that we've been assured and reassured by multiple immigration attorneys that undergoing a background check alone does not pose an immigration um, legal risk to the individuals that undergo those background checks. And we've heard from, from partners, including Dream.us partner colleges in, in Nevada, that many of their students have undergone background checks in the state of Nevada for their um, student teaching if they're in the education program at the university and haven't had issues. We are, we have our own very specific vendor that, that we're using for, for these background checks. So um, we're we're running a couple of test runs on on the background checks just to work out any logistical issues that that may come up, but we don't anticipate any um, logistical issues coming up. And again, this is a very exciting expansion for Dream.us scholars who don't have an EAD, who don't have DACA, who don't have TPS, regardless of your specific immigration status. So we we hope that many of you will consider applying if you have not already. And so going back to, to the core member program, right? So this is our flagship program. This is our, our two-year program for working professionals. So um, quick reminder on the differences of the uh, eligibility criteria for our core member program, our two-year full-time program, you must have an eligible EAD, right? Different from, from the Ignite Fellowship, which does not require an EAD at all. If you decide to apply to be a Teach for America core member, this is what you can expect your application process to look like. There's an online application component. If you're invited to an interview, um, you will complete a pre-interview activity, after which you will have your final virtual interview. Um, you'll have the opportunity to research and select your, your regional preferences, and then you'll, you'll receive a final decision on your application from Teach for America's admission team. For our eligible EAD folks in, in particular, so we have, um, you can see all of the regions on, on this map are Teach for America regions, but only the, the ones where you see 
a turquoise dot minus three regions that recently became alumni regions are the ones where folks who have eligible employment authorization documents are able to teach. Um, while you are a, a teacher, you will be an employee of the school or the district that, that you're in, and you'll earn a full salary and benefit from and benefits from that um, that school, that district. Additionally, you'll receive an educational award of about thirteen thousand dollars over two years from the Immigration and Education Alliance directly. And this is to make up for the fact that folks who are not U.S. citizens and or lawful permanent residents are not eligible to enroll in an AmeriCorps and therefore not eligible for the AmeriCorps equivalent education award. We fundraise these, these funds privately to be able to match that for our DACA recipients, TPS holders, et cetera. Um, you can also expect to receive a transitional financial support grant of, for our eligible EAD folks, it's $10,000. So the $5,000 stipend that is um, for everyone across the board for the 2023 core, but um, Pell Grant recipients are eligible for an additional $5,000. But as we know, DACA recipients, TPS holders, anyone who's not a US citizen or lawful permanent resident is not eligible for a Pell Grant. Um, so we we also have expanded that opportunity for our eligible EAD core members. During your time in the core, you can you can expect um, to be trained in your your region. So there is a pre-service program over the summer. Um, actually, I need to update this. It is not fully virtual. There are virtual components and it varies a little bit depending on your specific region. But you can expect coaching, professional development, other resources during your core experience, as well as certification and or graduate coursework in your region with the region's universities and, and or certification partner. So as, as a next step, we have our last application deadline um, of the 20 uh, of the 2023 core member recruitment season coming up in February. But before then, I would highly encourage you all, um, if you're interested in, in applying and you're an eligible EAD holder for the core member program, to meet with Sophia. So we'll, we'll drop um, Sophia's Calendly link in the chat. You can go in there and schedule some time with her. Um, and she is a phenomenal human being, a phenomenal resource for our eligible EAD holders who are considering applying to, to the core. Um, and I'll pause there to see Sophia. Julie, I don't know if you've been monitoring the chat, but before we move on to our, our panel, want to see if there are any questions that might be helpful to voice over now. Jose, I do see a question in the chat that I don't think was answered. And that okay. question is, it was when you were talking about background checks. Um, one of our scholars asked, is there a waiver for that? I have my substitute license, which requires a background check. Meaning if, if they've already undergone a background check? Yeah, I think they're asking if because they've already went through a background check with their substitute license, do they need to go through the TFA background check for these opportunities? That's a good question. I my um my instinct is probably yes. Julie, do you have a, a definitive answer to that? I do not. Yeah, I'm, so we we can I have, um, I have a more definitive answer there. So school districts generally um have their staff undergo a background check every single school year. So it's more than likely that you would be asked to do another background check despite having a substitute license already. Yeah, and I think if anything, right, if you 
if you are a dream.us scholar who applies and gets into the fellowship that is something that, that you can resurface with the ignite team when you're accepted as well all right so on that note i am um, jose i'm oh. sorry but it looks like we have a raised hand oh. um so sage feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question hi good evening everyone I actually do have a question. Now, this is regarding the process of reapplying. I tried it, uh, so I have applied, I believe, was it last year with um, Teach for America, um, but I was not admitted or was not chosen as one of the candidates. Now, what is your recommendation as far as um, reinforcement wise? I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was my presentation on the school plan. So I said, um, part of that application process was just me presenting like a, um, I guess, a teaching, um, a teaching lesson and going through that process. Now, what would be your recommendation as far as where do I strengthen myself or what should I have done differently? Um, if that's something that you are able to answer for me. Yeah, so I, I can't give you individual feedback on your previous application. Um, I haven't seen your application. I wasn't your, your interviewer, right? But what I, I would offer is, um, one, you, you can reapply for sure for the, for the 2023 core, unless you've already applied for the 2023 core. I'm not sure if you applied in a previous year or, or this year. No, it was actually last year. Yeah, so then you're, you're eligible to, to reapply for, for the 2023 core now and i would encourage you to um to apply to schedule some time with sophia um who can share a little bit more about resources that are available and ways that you might strengthen an application okay perfect thank you so much sure. yeah i just want to second that sage definitely schedule some time on my calendar so that we can talk um schedule time before you submit your application OK, um, definitely want to make sure that we are having some time to talk through, you know, pointers and, and things that you can do beforehand to prepare for that. Um, another question that came in from Mirka, I just want to check from somebody else. Um, is there do folks need to be an undergraduate to apply for the um, for the Ignite Fellowship or can they be in graduate school if they're enrolled as a student still? Both undergraduate and graduate students are eligible to apply. Uh, hello, good evening. If I may, I guess I'll ask now since we're. Thank you for uh, thank you for everything you presented. Truly appreciate it. Um, in terms of applying, say with Ignite, is should we go through that link you put in the chat and go through there? Because I know it's almost it's more standardized. Whereas as case as, as dreamers like very strange scenario. So how do we go about applying for that? Yeah, for, for the Ignite Fellowship, there are specific options for the dream.us. So you should, as you're going through the application process, you should see the dream.us in a couple of places on the application itself. But yes, it's Thank all you. the same, the same link for the application. Great Thanks. questions, y'all. And so with that, I'd love for you all to hear directly from, from some folks who have experience with the dream.us and with, with Teach for America. So um, Ruben, Alvaro, and Daniela, thank you so much for, for joining me. I'd love to start off, let me stop sharing my screen so that folks can see your, your faces, but would love to start with just some quick introductions if you all could share your names, pronouns, location, where you went to college and, and what you are, are doing now. And we can just go in the order that we see on the screen from, from left to right, starting with you, Ruben. Yeah, hello, uh, my name is Ruben. Uh, I was a Ignite fellow in 2021. Uh, I'm currently, oh, my pronouns are he slash him. Um, I'm currently in Chicago. I'm currently a medical student at Rush Medical College. Um, and I did an undergrad at the University of Central Florida with a degree in biomedical sciences and also a minor in uh, political sciences. 
I'll go next. My name is Alvaro, uh, Alvaro Pacheco Munoz. I go by he, him, él. I graduated from ASU back in 2019, 2020, yeah, 2020. Um, and I'm currently teaching Jacksonville, Florida. It's my last year as a core member, so it's exciting. Hello, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a little sick right now. Um, but hi, my name is Daniela Cuellar. Um, I go by she, her, ella. Um, I'm currently located in Phoenix, Arizona. I moved here from the Bay Area to teach. Um, I went to California State University, East Bay, um, and I'm currently a first grade teacher um, and also a master's student. And all three of you are incredible. Um, Ruben, I, I would like to start with, with you and your experience as, as an Ignite fellow. Can you tell us a little bit about what your experience was like as, as a fellow who was an undergraduate student at the same time? What did you learn through, through your experience? Yeah, I think the most important thing was um, it was a very humbling experience to, you know, teach students, um, I was teaching students that were in the fifth grade. Um, and you know, they're, uh, they're underserved, low income. Uh, so just to be able to advocate for them is a very humbling experience because, you know, obviously a lot of us come from that same background. Uh, so then to, you know, be able to help them is, is very humbling, very nice. Uh, and then also, you know, just learning from the educators, I think was really cool because they've been doing this for so many years. Uh, they know all the tips and tricks in order to be able to teach your students. And one of the best things that I think I saw was also the growth of my students, um, just how more comfortable they were with me and answering questions uh, and just their overall progress and, and becoming better students um, and getting to know them. Honestly, uh, I got to know like what they did, you know, after school, um, you know, things that they hated to do, like they sometimes hated to do certain like math multiplication but they love doing division for some reason so just this little cute things that you pick up from them is is really nice yeah and i think it's wild right to to see how much you can learn about students in such a short period of time over the course of one semester um and so when you were actually on on a similar panel with folks from the dream.us last year you were aspiring to go to medical school right and now now you're there um I'm, I'm curious now that you're a a medical student and reflecting back on on your ignite fellowship how um how did your ignite fellowship support you to to take that step what what connections do you see I think the biggest one is advocacy. So one thing's uh, why I chose the school that I go to here in Chicago, Rush Medical College, is uh, we're very big in advocating for our patients. Uh, we serve the west side of Chicago, which is a very underserved community. Um, so, you, you know, just without, you know, prejudice, but you can just see it right there. And then uh, you know that a lot of our patients are undocumented, low income, underinsured. Um, so coming in from Ignite, uh, being able to work with children, although there were just children, um, that advo advocating part, right, where it's like, it's more than just education. And here it's more than just health care. It's also um, looking at who the person is, where they come from, and how uh, we can provide a better education experience, but now it's a better health care experience for them. Yeah, and I hear that connection from, from folks who decide to, to leave the classroom to pursue other career paths after the core as well, right? That their, their time, whether as an Ignite Fellow or as a Teach for America core member, deeply influences and impacts their, their careers. Now that I am almost 10 years out from my Teach for America core member experience, I, I can say that that certainly is true for, for me, right? Um, thank you for, for sharing a little bit about your, your Ignite Fellowship experience. Alvaro and, and Daniel, I want to pivot to, to you a little bit and want you both to just take us back to, to the beginning. Why, why did you apply to, to TFA? And Daniela, why don't you kick us off? And then Alvaro would love to hear from you after. Yeah, most definitely. So um, just the opportunities that TFA allows you 
to experience, I think is huge. Um, and just, I think I saw so much positivity and I was always told, you know, there could be so much growth. And I was like, well, I have to go experience this. And um, I definitely saw the opportunities when I spoke even to Jose, I sat down and I asked him a bunch of questions. Um, and I knew that just being part of that guy, it made me feel secure. Um, and I knew it was going to give me these opportunities that I found really hard coming out of um, college to find in other places. Um, and I just, I mean, I believe in the statement and what TFA stands for. And I think it's a huge part of why I'm here. Um, and I want students to grow up seeing people like them in the classroom. Um, a lot of the times I'm able now to, you know, my students don't feel comfortable sp speaking English and I can speak to them in Spanish. And I, that's something that I didn't grow up with. And I think it would have been so nice. Um, so I think really just, I believe in the statement, the mission statement, and I believe, you know, the opportunities that it gives are super valuable. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I really liked your, your input there, Daniela, and I'd definitely like to bounce off of that. Uh, the TFA and the dream.us definitely provided a lot of opportunities, not only for myself, but others who have gone through the same experience. Um, but why did I apply for TFA? I applied for TFA out of, essentially it started off as a commitment because when I got the dream.us scholarship, uh, one of the questions asked, you know, what do you plan to do after you're done with school? Um, and one of the promises I made to myself was I want to be able to give back to the community and coming to my senior year at ASU, I didn't know as to how I was going to do that. And TFA just kind of presented itself and I thought it was just a sign, so I took it, I got accepted. And coming here and being a part of the classroom and having the effect that I do with these kids, with my children, I mean, they, I see them more than I see my own, my own kids, um, has just been huge. It's been impactful to the point where with one student, for example, um, he, English is a second language, he's very shy, he doesn't wanna read in class. Um, I had a conversation with him and mom and I spoke to him in Spanish and I told him that you have to try. That's all I'm asking you to do is just try. Even if you are embarrassed, like you have to try, you have to give effort. If not, you're never going to grow. And he started crying. Um, but the following day, like he was the first hand up wanting to read, wanting to participate. And I, I've been able to see his growth in just about two weeks. So it's just been fascinating and a huge blessing to be able to see the growth not only in them, but in myself through this whole process. Yeah, isn't it wild how I feel like in my my four years as a middle school math teacher, so I taught sixth and seventh grade math, I learned just as much from my students and, and their families as I hope they learned from, from me as, as their math teacher as well. Um, but... I know that that there are no 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 two days as as a Teach for America core member as a teacher are the same, right? But Daniela, I would love for you to, um, to the best of your ability, be paint us a picture of what a day in the life of your experience as a Teach for America core member as an educator looks like. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wake up in the morning, I, um, I do live pretty close to my school. Um, so I go, um, and I just, again, I have this relationship with my students in this culture in my classroom where it's very warm and welcoming. Um, and I think, again, just like I mentioned before, I want them to be able to come into a classroom and say, this feels like home. Um, and be able to feel comfortable. Um, so I think that's something that I definitely like thrives in my classroom and something that I'm always pursuing. Um, and with that, I mean, with TFA, I have my coach Meg who goes in twice a month. She goes in, she observes sometimes and she, it's such helpful feedback to just grow. Um, so I think that's something amazing that TFA offers. Um, and then, I mean, after work, I come home. I, like I said, TFA also does offer um, 
you know, does give me the chance to um, go to school and I'm currently getting my master's thanks to TFA. Um, so I do come home and I do, you know, do homework. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's great opportunities that TFA has given me. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you would like me to expand um, on that. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's work. And then I come, I do school. But yeah. You and Alvaro and all of the other teachers across the country have the most important job in this country. I 1000% wholeheartedly believe that. So thank you both for, for, for that work. Thank you, Ruben, for your, your contribution to the communities that Teach for America serves as well as, as a TFA fellow. Um, on a kind of logistical note, actually both you, Daniela, and Alvaro relocated, right, for, for your Teach for America core experience. But Alvaro, you moved clear across the country. You couldn't have moved any further away from where you were living um, to, to go to Jacksonville, Florida. Um, what was that experience like for you? And what, um, what resources or what supports made it feasible for you? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, the one that was, that took it hardest was definitely my mom. Um, especially because I was just in Arizona, uh, at the beginning of that year. And then close to the end, I was called her back and said, Hey, so I'm going to Florida. <laughs> so she wasn't happy about it. Uh, but we came from Washington state all the way to Jacksonville. And what made it feasible was just the support from TFA, um, just getting out here. And then not only that, I have, I, I had my, my son was three and a half at the time and my wife was six months pregnant. So through that whole process, um, TFA definitely helped out a lot. The core members here, the, the administrative team here that I have, it has just been incredible. When I arrived, um, I reached out to them and I said, Hey, I haven't, um, I'm having trouble, you know, trying to find some groceries. Can, you know, can we get some support? And I don't know who it was specifically, but the team members came together and they gave uh, my wife and I some gift cards to get some groceries. Um, but on top of all that, just the support has been incredible. Financial support, uh, health and wellness support, all of that wouldn't have, if I didn't have that, none of this would have been possible. Um, so moving out here has been one of the, in my opinion, my, my wife's opinion, one of the greatest moves we've done. Has it been difficult? Yes, but it's been feasible um, through TFA and we're happy to be here. Thank you so much for, for sharing and for also bringing the perspective, right, of for, for you as a core member, it wasn't just you, right? You had children, well, you had one kiddo and another on, on the way and uh, a pregnant wife. And um, it's just really beautiful and powerful to hear about your, your experience and the impact that you've been having on on your kiddos over the course of your your time so far in in the classroom in in Jacksonville. So again, thank you. Um, I'm curious to hear from any any of you who who would like to share. Um, given your your immigrant background, your immigration status at TFA, what factors did you consider when deciding to join Teach for America, whether as a a core member? or an Ignite fellow? And I'll let who, whoever would, would like to kick us off. Um, I guess I can start off. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm answering the question, uh, but I think what's something that was really important to me, uh, which is what um, Alvaro kind of talked about, was giving back to the community. Um, obviously, you know, we're an immigrant. Uh, we're immigrants. Um, most of us in documenter have DACA. And I think to be able to give back to a community, um, whether they might not be undocumented or DACA, but they are from like the same, they, they can, you know, understand where, where we come from. I think that's really great. And I mean, I see it even now as a future um, doctor uh, where, you know, there's a big statistic out there, 6% of physicians today are Latinos, um, even less, you know, are DACA. 
Uh, but, you know, our population, I think now is about 20%. Uh, so obviously, you know, to give back, but also empower um, people to be like, hey, you know, this person is doing this, you know, especially for, for a little kid, how um, I think powerful that can be, because I know uh, growing up, you know, when I did see a Latino uh, that was a doctor, that was a teacher, I was like, oh, I want to be them. You know, it's like, oh, it's possible for me as a Latino to, to be that. Um, so I'm not sure if I answered that question, but that was kind of um, what really pushed me to, to be an Ignite fellow, to give back and uh, hopefully motivate students, um, you know, to, to try to better themselves. Yeah, no, absolutely. Alvaro and Daniela, is there anything that, that you would add? Otherwise, I have, I have one, one closing question for all three of you before we hand it over to the audience for any audience questions that, that they might have for you. Um, no, I mean, just wanting to do something more outside of myself um, because you know, they're, they're the future generation. They're, they're who are going to be caring for us. And I don't want the progress to stop here because there's, there's a lot more that DACA can provide. We just haven't figured it out how. Um, and one of those kids can be the one to, to change it for everybody. Um, so yeah, it's just giving back to the community has been the biggest factor that's driven me in doing this and, and staying committed to it. That resonates deeply with with me as well and one of the the biggest reasons that i decided to do tfa myself back in 2014 also um and my my closing question for for you all before we open up to audience q a is given your experiences with um the students that you've had the privilege of serving what what gives you hope for for the future for the future of the communities that we serve for the future of this country I can go. Um, so I think despite all the challenges that they go through in their community, they are super like determined to always try. Um, and no matter if they had a really bad night the the night before, they come in and they're like, I want to learn. Um, you know, I, I want to be super smart. And I'm like, you know, you already are. But um, I think it's just that determination of them wanting it. Um, and, and just showing up and being like, oh, you know, I couldn't come to school, but I still like, what can I do? Um, so I think that determination is definitely there. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely add to that. Uh, that determination is there also because uh, I'll have students, you know, kind of help out in managing the classroom. They'll say, hey, you know, Mr. P's teaching. Uh, don't, don't, dis don't disrespect Mr. P like that. Like he's trying to teach us something. Um, so that feels great. And also to get, be able to give them that empowerment in the classroom, that role of a manager in the classroom. Uh, you know, you are shaping leaders, future leaders, future mentors um, through teaching, through being an educator and, and having that impact on them. Uh, but one thing that I got really fascinated with or passionate about recently is data and presenting that data to them and presenting numbers because they're more than likely going to comprehend numbers than they are verbs or words. Um, so showing them numbers has really up and ramped the effort and, and advocacy for their own education in the classroom, which has been um, huge. Yeah, I think for me, it's more, um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm only 23, but I remember growing up, um, you know, especially when uh, from low socioeconomic status, uh, it was kind of hard to ask for help. And sometimes it was kind of looked down upon you to ask for help. Uh, we were kind of raised like, no, you just get through it. Um, that's how you get through the hard times. But I feel like these students now, they understand like they can ask for help. And, um, you know, something that I've seen, you know, as a medical student, you have to ask for help um, throughout all your time here and even growing up. So, uh, you know, that gives me hope for the future that they know that, like, there's people around them that care for them. There's a community, right? Um, and they'll have that help so that their own hard work isn't the only thing 
um, that gets them there. You know, it's also the, the community around them that, that helps them get to their goals. Thank you all for sharing. All three of you give me hope for, for this country, the ways in which you've touched the lives of, of students across the country, the ways in which those experiences will inform and shape your professional careers and trajectories for, for the rest of your lives. That gives me hope. Our students themselves, they give me a ton of hope. Um, as, as you all may, may know, Prop 308 in, in Arizona just officially passed, right? And, and Teach for America was, was right there with, with our students and with a Teach for America alumni-led organization, Aliento, um, putting out op-eds, canvassing, phone banking, um, out on election day talking to voters, but on election day and for all of the days since then until the, the race was called, seeing the power of high school students and college students advocating for, for themselves, that gives me a ton of hope for, for this country and, and for, the, um, for the future. So with that, we, we have a few minutes left here. Um, would love to open it back up to, to the audience. If folks have any questions for our panelists, um, would love for, for you to come off mute or to drop them in, in the chat. See, is there any news for initial DACA recipients? So unfortunately, initial DACA applications are still um, being barred from being processed, from being approved by a court order. So nothing has changed on that front. Luisa, um, I see your question in the chat as well. Um, and so the, the question is, I know you guys recently changed your requirements for TFA. In the near future, do you see, do you guys see expanding your requirements to undocumented folks since DACA has been closed for a while? Um, so a big reason for the difference in eligibility requirements between our Teach for America core member program and the Ignite Fellowship is the employment piece, right? For our core members, they are employees of their schools and their districts, and they have to run I-9 verification processes to make sure that they're eligible to legally work in, in the U.S., versus the Ignite Fellowship, which is a non-employment based opportunity. Um, so I think the um, the really important and time sensitive and urgent thing here is that Congress needs to pass a pathway to citizenship, right? For, uh, for DACA recipients, for undocumented youth, for dreamers, so that these, these questions that are coming up in the chat regarding eligibility and other opportunities can, can be rendered obsolete and, and moot, right? So that certainty can be something that our, our communities have. Yeah, no question on my end. Just wanted to thank you guys for what you shared. I, I'm especially encouraged often, uh, Ruben, you're 23, I'm 33. So I'm just starting my fourth week of college at 33. <laughs> but I'm just encouraged because uh, people who are involved with Dream US, like they continue to show up for calls like these. And I think that really is what makes the difference, you know, especially in an educator, right? That, which requires that lifelong commitment. So uh, yeah, thank you for everything you shared. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you all. And thank you to our, our panelists. Thank you so much. Thank you to my colleagues who, who joined. And thank you so much to the Dream.us team. Um, so much of what we're able to do and this pilot would not be possible without the, the input and the partnership of the folks at, at the Dream.us. So we are 
very grateful for, for all of you. Thanks again, folks. Um, we'll be sharing contact information and additional resources. Nicole, you can expect that from, from me to share out with, with folks uh, at some point later this week. But otherwise, it's been a privilege and, and a pleasure being in community and sharing space with all of you today. And I hope that you all have a great rest of your night. Hey, Pedro, I just wanted to say um, you're on a great journey. Congrats on getting to college. Um, and you're never too old to start. Um, so I'm a Thank big you. advocate for learning, big advocate for continuing your education, whether it's formal, informal. Um, so big ups to you, man. And, Thank you, brother. Uh, Thank you. For you.